Hi, my name is Carl Harry. I am a music teacher, father of six, private music teacher, and a professional musician, have been my whole life. And I've never done this before, so this is kind of hard. I've never talked about uh, this publicly. But I would like to share two supernatural experiences that I've encountered over my life. Uh, first off, I want to uh, preface this with saying that I'm not anybody special. I'm just an ordinary, lowly musician. Uh, come from a godly family. Uh, as I was growing up, I'm going to make this quick because I know people are like, would you hurry and tell the story? Yeah, okay, I'm going to make it quick. Uh, I've always wondered, I've, had a, I've always had a strong faith and a deep love for the Lord. But like all of us, because we're only human, I've all, often questioned, does he really pay attention to me? And, of course, I come from a fundamentalist Pentecostal background, so uh, lots lots of healings, miracles, visions, things going on, uh, some bona fide for sure, some questionable, but that has been my norm for my whole life. And I've often questioned, does the Lord really listen to me personally? Is he concerned with me? I'm not that important. I hear these things happening to other people, but not me. And I, when I pray, I would often ask the Lord about that because I'm very frank about it when I pray. Well, I've had two experiences, and I've never had any experiences since, and I don't really need it. But I thought I, 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 thought I would share this with you, and I realize that my agnostic and, and atheist friends, if nothing else, I'm planting a seed. It's not my job to make you believe. That's, that's the Holy Spirit's job. Uh, people who know me personally know that I do not lie, that uh, uh, I would never make this up or try to, and I'm certainly not, have nothing to gain by lying. I mean, I'm not making any money off of this or selling any books or anything like that. And frankly, I'm 53 years old and I've never shared this publicly with anybody. But I thought now was the time, and so I'm going to share it with you real quickly. The first incident uh, was when I was very, very young, probably early, early 20s. Uh, I was married, and uh, I was having a hard time uh, as a musician, couldn't find a job, didn't know what direction to, to really go in my life, didn't know whether I should go back to school, if I should continue to play, because that was my gift. It's really the only thing I could do well. And I didn't know what to do. And so I was, and my wife at the time and I were living with her grandparents and didn't have a job. And I got down in the garden and had a dirt prayer nap with the God in the garden and laid down and said, Lord, I need some help. I just need direction. I'm willing to go find a job, no matter how menial it is, and go back to school and sell everything in my van and never play another instrument as long as I live. I was at that point, I was willing. And, uh, and that, needless to say, I was pretty upset by it. And then <clears throat> uh, that night I called the 700 Club and I got a hold of a little lady who claimed she was Baptist. And she had a word of knowledge. And for you Pentecostals, it's a supernatural word, which is very unusual coming from the Baptist. No offense, my Baptist brothers and sisters. But she said that I would have a job in two weeks. Well, I felt better after prayer and I really forgot all about it. And with, uh, two weeks later, I was sitting uh, through a strange set of circumstances, was sitting in, uh, at Six Flags, signing a contract with a band for three and a half months worth of work for 300 350 a week, which back then, that felt like a bonanza of money for me. Uh, and I signed the contract, and while I was signing the contract, I heard a voice inside my head say, it's been two weeks. And I looked at the date after I heard that voice, and it was exactly 14 days. I almost fell off the seat. I could not believe it. So that was my first incident, and I, and I realize, okay, I realize that most folks are going to say, well, that was just a coincidence, and that I get it, okay. I don't feel like it is, but I understand. It's okay. So we'll, we'll say that's coincidental. Then my next uh, event that happened to me was, one day I was, uh, I lived in Wiley at the time, and one day I was coming into Wiley. It was raining, not hard, but it was uh, raining lightly, and the road was very slick. 
And I remember I had praise music on the radio, and it was kind of loud. And being a musician, I love to sing in the car. So I was praising the Lord and singing and having a good time and wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. And as you come into Wiley a certain way, there's a road that really cuts to the right very sharply. And I realized it too late, and it came upon me, and I slammed on the brakes, and I spun my car two or three times. Uh, there was a house in front of me, and there were two poles. I went right in between the two poles and, sl and turned my car around two or three times and stopped. And I was okay. Everything was fine. So I, you know, after my heart was beating fast, but after a while, I, you know, I kept going and, kept, and went on home, praising the Lord and thanking God I didn't get into a wreck or run into a, the living room of somebody's house. I remember going into the bathroom, and uh, I didn't see anybody at the house at the time, but I remember going into the bathroom and saying these words. Uh, this was after I was praising the Lord, thanking Him that I didn't have a bad wreck. But I remember going into the bathroom and saying, Lord, I want to be as close to you as humanly possible. And I never said those words or told anybody about the accident in my family or what I said. Never said a word to anyone. Not one word. Actually, I forgot all about it. Went on about my business. Several months later, I had a friend of mine that asked me to go to a church. Okay? And uh, he said there was a guy there that operated in the gifts. Of course, being a Pentecostal, that wasn't a big deal to me. So I went. And the only person that I knew at this whole, it was like a church they had started in a hotel convention room or something. So it was a new church. So I went with him, and I went to the service. Of course, I didn't know anybody there except my friend, and I certainly hadn't said anything to him. I'd forgotten all about this incident at that time because this was several months later. So at the end of the service, uh, this gentleman, this minister, whoever, invited people to come up for prayer. And I noticed that as we were in line, and I am always don't have a problem with people praying for me. I need all the prayer I can get. But as I was in line and going forward, people were reacting emotionally. Just Some were falling over, some were crying, some were laughing. And I, of course, being a Pentecostal, I'm used to this. It didn't bother me. I really didn't think anything about it. Uh, but as I went up there, I noticed that this minister, he never looked up. He had his head down and his eyes closed. He never looked at anybody. And so when it was my turn, I grabbed his hands. And he began to pray. He never looked at me. I didn't know this man, never seen him before in my life. He looked at me and he began to pray or talk as if it was God doing the talking. And he said, Son, I saw you when you almost had your wreck on that rainy day. And I heard you say, I want to be as close to you as humanly possible. Every hair on my body stood straight up. I knew it was God. There was no way this man could have known this. I didn't tell a soul about this incident. The man never even looked at me. And of course, I began to cry, and he let go, and I, I walked back to my seat. I was so stunned and shocked that I couldn't even say anything. And I've only shared this story with maybe... A half a dozen people privately. I've never done it publicly. And I wanted to share this with you, and I hope that this builds your faith. Uh, from that point on, I've never had anything like that happen. I've had prayer, prayers answered, obviously, because God answers prayers. Sometimes He says yes. Sometimes He says no. Sometimes He says maybe or wait. But I've never had any other, any other experiences since then. I really don't need it. Because I believe God meets you where you are at the time. And that's what I needed for that, at, at that point in my life. That's what I needed. But as your faith grows and your relationship grows, it's not necessary. You, you don't chase after visions and things like that. It's just not necessary. Does God hear us? Yes, He hears us. We may not feel it. We may not know it. And you may never have an experience like I've had. You may have more experience. It doesn't make you any more spiritual or any less spiritual. It's just God's grace. But I'm here to let you know that God hears you. Bless you.